I'm Charles Wilson, Senior Principal Engineer at Motional, responsible for cybersecurity development lifecycle practice. This presentation will cover the supplier cybersecurity process mapping. This diagram shows the overall AVCDL supply chain training path. If you're taking this training, it's assumed that you've already completed the supply chain overview training. This training covers the vendor cybersecurity process to AVCDL mapping. Additional trainings will cover Manufacturer Disclosure Statement, AVC-MDS, Supplier Self-Reported Cybersecurity Maturity, Cybersecurity Requirements, Tailoring the Cybersecurity Interface Agreement, Service Level Agreements, SLAs, Software Bill of Materials, SBOMs, Attack Surface Analysis, and Threat Modeling. The classic metaphor of the square peg in the round hole is about a mismatch between what we have and what we need. What happens when this mismatch becomes not just inconvenient, but life-threatening? This is a lithium hydroxide canister. It takes the shape of a literal square peg, and the hose coming out of it goes into a literal round hole. Here's the lithium hydroxide canister in place. That square peg has been attached to the round hole, after a fashion. Let's zoom out a bit and give this scene some context. Here we can see two of the Apollo 13 astronauts whose lives were directly impacted by this device. The third astronaut is holding the camera. That adapter, that lithium hydroxide container, removes CO2 from the atmosphere, thus allowing the astronauts to breathe. This square peg and this round hole show what the consequences can be when we have mismatches between what you have and what you need. So how do we keep these types of problems from cropping up within the context of cybersecurity between the supplier and the customer? We're going to do that by creating a mapping between the processes that the vendor uses and the ones that the customer uses. Here's a typical set of supplier processes. You'll note that it's using the classic V diagram that we see so often. Although it's easy to understand, its processes are very general. Also, they don't directly map to the AVCDL or to 21434 for that matter. And here's the AVCDL. You'll note that there is a much higher resolution in terms of the activities that are undertaken. Now let's see how we bring these two together. If we overlay the supplier processes onto the AVCDL, the complexity that arises becomes very evident. Many of the supplier processes cover multiple AVCDL processes. In order for the supplier using their processes and the customer using the AVCDL, or vice versa, to communicate, there needs to be a clear and defined mapping between these two disparate approaches. This diagram shows the major documents used in both the Supplier Selection, Request for Information, RFI, and Request for Quote, RFQ activities, as well as the development, production, and post-production activities. Although the supplier self-reported maturity and the supplier cybersecurity manufacturer's disclosure statement are the two primary documents enabling the creation of the tailored cybersecurity requirements and the cybersecurity interface agreement, it is the vendor process to AVCDL product mapping that allows us to do this when there are established supplier processes. It's critical to both the requirements tailoring and CIA creation that the processes being addressed be clearly understood by both the supplier and the customer. Process mapping ensures that both parties are on the same page. There are three documents within the AVCDL document set that support the creation of the supplier processes to AVCDL requirement product mapping. These are the Understanding Supplier Cybersecurity Process Mapping Elaboration Document, the 434-REC to AVCDL Product Sheet of the Vendor Process to AVCDL Product Mapping Template Spreadsheet Workbook, and the 434-REC to Vendor Process Sheet of the Vendor Process to AVCDL Product Mapping Template spreadsheet workbook. In order to create the process mapping, it's necessary that the supplier review the AVCDL documentation. The starting point for this is the AVCDL primary document itself. 
This provides the overview of the cybersecurity development lifecycle and establishes the framework upon which both the phases and the phase requirements exist. Within the AVCDL primary document, each of the phase requirements is listed. For each of the phase requirements, summary information and a list of secondary documents elaborating on the material is provided. The secondary documents referred to in the phase requirements shown in the AVCDL primary document contain detailed information as to the processes that are expected to take place in order to satisfy the phase requirement. Here you can see the relationship between the various AVCDL documents covering the supplier process to AVCDL phase requirement product mapping. We can see that the vendor process to AVCDL product mapping template is used to create the vendor process to AVCDL product mapping document, a specific instance of the product mapping template. The dotted lines surrounding those two documents indicate that the understanding supply chain process mapping elaboration document refers to both of these documents taken together. Within the larger supplier document landscape, the vendor process to AVCDL product mapping is used to inform the creation of the tailored cybersecurity requirements document when the supplier has an established set of cybersecurity processes. This conditional nature is indicated by the dotted orange line as opposed to the solid ones used with the other documents feeding into the tailored cybersecurity requirements document. Having this mapping ensures that the tailored cybersecurity requirements are conveyed in a manner that makes sense to both the supplier and the customer. This diagram is derived from the supplier cybersecurity guidance document diagram in the understanding supply chain interaction in an AVCDL context elaboration document. Let's consider the process for creating the mapping between the supplier's processes and the AVCDL phase requirement processes. Here's the workflow to be used. This diagram is taken from the Understanding Supplier Cybersecurity Process Mapping Elaboration Document. As you can see, there are three activities that take place, detailing the supplier cybersecurity processes, creation of the supplier to AVCDL mapping, and verification of the mapping. In the Supplier Cybersecurity Process Detailing activity, the Supplier Cybersecurity SME uses the Vendor Process Documentation Set in conjunction with the AVCDL Documentation Set to complete the Vendor Process to AVCDL Product Mapping Template. This results in the creation of a Vendor to AVCDL Map with Vendor Processes Added document specific to the supplier. The Customer Cybersecurity SME uses this document to create a completed vendor to AVCDL map. This map is then reviewed by the Customer SME. If process gaps are found, these are fed back to the supplier. The supplier will either create an update, including the embedded processes, or confirm that a process gap exists. Once it's determined that there are no unacknowledged process gaps, the document is considered to be verified. The 434 REC to AVCDL product sheet of the Vendor Process to AVCDL Product Mapping Template workbook serves as our starting point for mapping. It provides a mapping between the 21434 requirements, their associated work products, and the AVCDL. This is important because it doesn't require the supplier to have an in-depth knowledge of 21434. The material provided in the AVCDL, including the AVCDL Phase Requirement Product to ISO 21434 Work Fulfillment Summary Certification Document, in conjunction with all of the other AVCDL documents, provide extensive explanation as to how each of the 21434 requirements is satisfied. This serves as a basis from which the supplier can then create their own mapping to the 21434 requirements. Next, the supplier will take the 434 REC to Vendor Process Sheet of the Vendor Process to AVCDL Product Mapping Template Workbook and complete it, replacing the top rows, listing the AVCDL materials divided into phases and phase requirements with their own corresponding phases and processes, showing how those map onto the corresponding 21434 requirements. 
Once the supplier has completed mapping their processes against 21434, they'll return the workbook to the customer. The customer's cybersecurity SME will then take both the 434 to AVCDL and 434 to supplier mappings and bring them together in an AVCDL to supplier process mapping. This will take the AVCDL processes on the left and the supplier processes across the top and show how those map to each other using 21434 as a basis for alignment. It's this spreadsheet that will be used in order to determine the supplier process gaps. And it's this spreadsheet that will be used to allow the vendor and the customer to communicate various process distinctions. Those gaps will need to be filled with additional processes, either supplied from the AVCDL or created by the supplier. It's recommended that when creating the mapping, that you first handle the simple case where a single AVCDL or supplier process maps to a single 21434 requirement. Then move on to the cases of one to many or many to one mappings. Because of the overall complexity of the cybersecurity processes throughout the development lifecycle, it's important that the mapping between the supplier and customer processes be clearly documented. It's important to verify what those processes do. Since the processes are documented, you should be able to review them to determine that they in fact do provide the coverage that they purport. All AVCDL materials, both in source and distribution form, are available on our GitHub site, as shown here. Because of the size of the repository, it's recommended that you either clone the repository or download a zip archive of it if you're not familiar with using Git. Instructions for downloading a zip archive are linked to on the repository's front page. The next step in this training sequence is to complete the other two courses at this level, if you haven't already. The AVCMDS training covers the supplier's cybersecurity manufacturer disclosure statement. The supplier self-reported cybersecurity maturity training covers how a supplier self-reports the maturity of their processes in the context of the AVCDL. Once these three trainings at this level are complete, you should proceed to the security requirements training. Here are the references to the source material used in the creation of this presentation. They'll also be included in the video description. Additionally, this presentation source material will be provided in the AVCDL GitHub repository 